to see some hearts. I want to know you out there and that you not just that you didn't fall asleep on me. Amen. Amen. So I just want you to just stay with us. Amen. Because I know that God has a word for you on today. So thankful that we have added to our virtual worship staff. Amen. Of course, we're still practice, doing best practices and, and safety and everything. So that's still going on. We just uh, incorporate our praise team. Amen. Josh had some help today and we want to thank God for them being with us. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God. We have two of our greeters that are here with us as well, helping us stay in line and make sure we're doing what we're supposed to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Even though we know the church is not open to the public just yet, we're thankful that we have people here who are assisting with the uh, those of us who helped me to do this live. Because as I said when we first started this, that when we come with them on Sunday mornings, because you can't come here to us, because you can't come to the sanctuary, we want to bring the sanctuary to you. And I truly believe that you ought to have the same kind of experience at your home that you do when you come here on 3605 Tangerine. Amen. 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 Uh, Luke chapter 6. Now I'm going to read verses 27 through 31. Amen. In Luke chapter 6 verses 27 through 31. And if you have it, say amen. 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 Starting verse 27, I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it says, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, amen. and pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, off the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. Verse 31. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. Amen. Amen. I want to preach this morning from the subject, defeating the enemy of retaliation. Amen. Defeating the enemy of retaliation. God bless you. You may be seated. Those who are standing. Defeating the enemy of retaliation. Now, here we have a very peculiar text because uh, Jesus is dealing with something that is, quite honestly, a tough pill to swallow for many of us. And that subject is loving your enemies. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this now because I'm glad that we had a wonderful celebration. I'm glad that we had a chance to give God praise. I'm glad that we had our praise break. Amen. Because this might not be one of those messages that we're going to shout on today. So I'm going to need y'all to really stay with me and stay focused because I truly believe that God wants to tell us something in this time and in this season as it relates to this matter. Um, so we see that for so many people, for so many people that it seems so natural to operate by that mantra of help those who help you and hurt those who hurt you. And see what happens is if you're like me, we misquote that golden rule, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Well, I used to quote it, do unto others before they do unto you or do unto others as they've done unto you. And in some cases, just do unto others, period. That's how I used to quote it. But, but we see here that church retaliation has become a common sense way to order life these days. And we live in a world now where powerful and wealthy people use power and wealth to accumulate even more power and wealth with little consideration of the effects on other people. And as a wealthy rancher was once said, all I want is what's mine and what adjoins it. Now, in many circles, uh, such aggressive behavior is not only condoned, but is celebrated. And in some cases, truly evil people deliberately, listen to me, they deliberately impose injury on others for no apparent reason. And it's a little easier now to understand the person who would steal something uh, of value, but, but it's more difficult to understand a person who 
would murder someone just because of racial, racial hatred or shoot someone such as an innocent bystander just for kicks. But however, when you look at this text, when you look at this passage of scripture, when Jesus is speaking, he's telling us that retaliation is not how kingdom people should respond. And this is a very hard lesson that seems very unnatural, but, but, the, but by the grace of God, church, we can move forward and move beyond executing justice to extending mercy. Now, let me go ahead and clarify something here because, again, I told y'all this is going to be a different kind of word, but, but let me clarify something because I am not saying by any means that those who commit heinous crimes should not be punished. That's not what I'm saying. They, I'm not saying that they should not be punished because I truly believe God, he ex he, God puts laws in the land. Obeying the law is a part of the word of God. It's scriptural to obey the law. But however, I do believe there are some instances where we must learn how not to retaliate. Now, I want to share some things with you uh, that I know that are going to that, that they're going to be kind of difficult to understand. But if you just really focus on what Jesus is saying, I promise you that you'll get a better understanding of what he wants us to learn today. Now, the first thing we see in this text here, if you read it, uh, the first thing I want to share with us is in order to defeat the enemy of retaliation, we must first of all avoid retribution. Amen. Avoid retribution. Here it is in the text, verse 27 and 28 says, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. Now the threat of religious persecution was very real during this time, and this is why Jesus made reference to the cursing enemy, which suggests a context of religious persecution. So there was some persecution going on for religious reasons during this time. Now, although this is hard for us to do on our own, it becomes easier when we are grounded in the faith of Christ's love. Let me say it again. Although this is hard for us, it's difficult for us to do on our own, it becomes easier when we operate in the faith of Christ's love. So let me tell you basically what that means when you talk about uh, retribution. Um, Retribution, once again, is just another way of saying that basically don't pay evil for evil. Don't do somebody dirty just because they did you dirty. And then what's so crazy about it is this. He's telling us, Jesus is telling us right here in the text to love our enemies. Now, let's talk a minute for what about what an enemy is. Because the last time I checked, an enemy is someone who is against you, Brother Garrett. An enemy is someone who will do any and everything they can to try to take you down or make you look bad. And I don't know about you, but I know I had a few enemies and I still have a few enemies in my lifetime. I know y'all are good people. I know that most of y'all everybody love you. You love them. It's all good. But but everybody, I mean, but I know I can't speak for everybody else, but all I know is that I have had enemies in my lifetime. And guess what? Not only have I had enemies, I've also been an enemy to other people. See, many of us can't admit that. Right, right, right. So let's just keep it real. I've not only had enemies, but I've been an enemy to other people. And here Jesus is telling me to love my enemies and do good to those who hate me. So preacher, what you talking about? I'm basically saying that that person who is against you in your family, let's start in the house. Uh, unless that person who's against you in your family, you got to love them anyway. That person who is on your job, who has tried to blackball you, that, that, that supervisor that tries to put their foot on your neck every time you're trying to get a promotion you still got to love them that person that 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 ex-spouse who did you dirty who lied on you who I mean, who lied to you who cheated on you and who did all those dirty things you still got to love them. according to the scripture you still have to love them you still have to do good to those who hate you and you know, and I don't know about you, but every lesson that Jesus teaches is not necessarily easy for me. That's right. 
It's not. I'm just going to keep it real because I really w didn't even want to deal with this today. Amen. I didn't. I want to move on and deal with something else. But, but, but God had to remind me that in this time that we're in, we have a lot of enemies out there and we're feeling a certain type of way about them. So it is your job, son, to stand before my people and share with them what I want them to know and remind them what my word says. I just got to remind you what the book says. So, but watch this, watch this, church, watch this. Because, because, listen, listen. We must remember that we have to be merciful just as our Heavenly Father has been merciful to us. Oh my God, I know, I know that's a tough one. Pastor, did you go there? Yes, I did. We have to be merciful to others as our Heavenly Father has been merciful to us. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me talk about this. How many times have, have, have you messed up in your life? How many times have you done God dirty? Okay, I, yeah, okay, we, we got, I got a lot of saved, sanctified folk, ain't never done nothing wrong. That's, that's good. That's praise God for you. I pray that I get your strength. I Prayed I get your anointing. I'm not there yet. There have been times in my own life where I have done God dirty and he really should have cut me off a long time ago. And I'm not talking about old stuff that happened 15 and 20 and 25 years ago. I'm talking about stuff that's happened since I've been saved. I'm talking about stuff that's happened since I've been called to preach. I'm talking about stuff that has happened since I've been pastoring. There have been many times in my own life where I've done God dirty but even though I've done him dirty his mercy and his grace still lifted me up and got me to where I needed to be and because of that if he extended that to me I've got to be able to extend that to other people yeah 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 see because mercy you know look see when we let's talk about grace for a second let me back up here because see basically all grace is is God's unmerited favor Amen. Now you do know what unmerited means. Unmerited means you don't deserve it. Anybody, look, 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 look. Let me tell you, when, 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 uh, I know for sure when I was in school, you know, especially elementary school, middle school, I used to get these little certificates on awards day. All right, That's certificates on awards day. And I told y'all, when I was younger, you know, much, much younger, I was somewhat of a bad actor. Now, yeah, I was a bad actor, and, and, and but, but on awards day, <laughs> I got a few little certificates, Stefan, and, and, and some of it said, uh, and they had one award that was called the Citizenship Award. <laughs> Anybody know about the Citizenship Award? Anybody ever got, your child ever got the Citizenship Award? It was the only one they got because they've been a hellion all year long. Anybody know what I'm talking Oh my God. I got what was called the, the Citizenship Award. And the Citizenship Award basically means that I was a good citizen in the classroom. Okay, now even though I had to sit out for recess a few times, even though I had to sit by myself at, a, at an isolated lunch table, table a few times, even though they had to call my mom and dad to come to the school a couple of times because I was cutting up, I still got a citizenship award. Knowing I didn't deserve the citizenship award, knowing I was cutting up, knowing I was acting a fool, knowing I was doing whatever I wanted to do, but yet I still got that award. And y'all, all God has done for us is given us a citizenship award. Yeah, yeah, you disobeyed me, but I'm going to give you the citizenship award. Yeah, yeah, you cut somebody out last week, but I'm still going to give you the citizenship award. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't pay your tithes last week, but I'm still going to give you the citizenship award. Not because you deserve it, but I'm giving it to you because of my grace and my mercy. And if I can do that for you, you can do it for somebody else. So yeah, not only uh, should we avoid retribution when we want to defeat the enemy of retaliation, but we should also Watch this. We should also exercise restraint. Exercise restraint. Here it is in the text, verse 29. It says, and this is a tough one, y'all. Hold on to your seatbelts. It says, to him who strikes you on the cheek, on the one cheek, offer the other also. And for him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Now, let me tell y'all what restraint means. 
Restraint is a measure or a condition that keeps someone or something under control or within limits. If you had smaller, if you know about when your children were smaller, they had the, the, the car seat, they used to call it a child restraint seat. And what that restraint seat does is it keeps that baby in that seat and it limits their movement. When they want to jump up and touch everything that's in the car, when they want to turn their bodies a certain way, when they want to do certain things, they can't do it. Why? Because the restraint seat holds them and doesn't just strap them down on one shoulder, but the child restraint hits both shoulders and across the chest. So their, their movement is very limited. Now, what Jesus is describing here, repeat, and he describes here being repeatedly, what he's talking about when he's talking about slapping, I'm sorry, not slapping, what he's talking about uh, for those who strike on you, well, that's another word, slapping is another word for it. All for the other one also, what he's basically saying is that he's talking about being repeatedly vulnerable in the face of injustice. Right, right. Y'all know we live in that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're vulnerable, seems like, in the face of injustice. But watch this. Whenever we restrain from retaliation, we are exposed and at risk. So wait a minute, preacher. What you're trying to say, let's just make this thing plain. So what you're trying to say to me is that when somebody walks up and hits me, I'm supposed to turn the other cheek and let them hit me again. Now, I used to live by the mantra, and in some cases, I still live by it. That's why I say, again, this word is not just for you, it's just for me, that I ain't, I ain't got but two cheeks to sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got me on this, on, on the one cheek, then you got me on the other one. Okay, so my two cheeks, you already hit me on my two cheeks, so now it's time for me to step up and do something. Because you didn't, I, I'm out of cheeks, basically, that's all it is, if I can put it like that. So, so but, but this is, a, again, this is a hard, a uh, tough thing for us to do because for many of us it's so easy for us to get up and our flesh rises up and we definitely want to do something about what we need to do about whoever did whatever they did to us, if I can say it like that. And, and it's so easy to want to ball up that fist. But church, we have to learn and, and listen, we have to learn how to exercise restraint. I tell young men this all the time and I remember my mom used to tell me this several years ago, even uh, as a young adult, she used to tell me that when you are dealing with the cops, uh, the, my main concern is that I want you to come home in one piece. That's my main concern. I, I, I don't want you to react in a certain way that's going to cause you to lose your life and me and your daddy got to go to the morgue to identify your body. I don't want that to happen to you. So that's why even if, if they do something wrong, here's how you handle it. Go ahead and be compliant to what they're asking you to do and then you come home and tell me and your daddy about it and then we'll take matters into our own hands legally. Amen. See, because when you do stuff the legal way, you ain't got to worry about doing jail time. When you do stuff the legal way, you don't have to worry about catching a case. Because I told y'all last week, it's, you, it's a whole lot easier to hit folks with the power of the pen. And a good attorney, can you say amen? Amen. So, 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 yeah, the main thing is we have to learn how to exercise that restraint. Keep our composure. Do you not know in the midst of all of this stuff that's going on, I know personally, even even with the George Floyd situation, I have not yet sat and watched the whole tape, the whole video. I haven't done it yet. And I, to be honest with you, I don't think I am going to do it because I know that if I sit down and watch it, I know that it's going to make me very, very angry and it's going to make me probably do something that a Christian, let alone a pastor, should not do. I, I, I can't put, gather 
myself to, to sit and watch. I couldn't even watch Mississippi burning all the way through. Because if you're not careful and if your mind is not where it needs to be, now those y'all who, you know, watching and you came along after the 80s, you don't know nothing about Mississippi burning. But, but if you ever watch Mississippi burning, if you're not careful and if your mind ain't where it needs to be, that movie make you want to run out and kill a white man. I'm just going to say it just like it is. So, so, so I just know that I could not gather myself to watch because I know my anger would start brewing up. And how many know that when your anger starts brewing up, there are some times and some things that you're going to do that you might not necessarily need to do and you might not even be able to live to tell the story because you did it. So, so, so I had to, in order for me to practice restraint, I had to try not to put myself in that situation. And let me tell you this, whatever, and really, and I'm really talking to my young men now who might be watching me. Whenever you are dealing with a situation like that, especially if you're a teenager, even if you're a young adult, go ahead, just do what you need to do so you can get home and survive. So you, I mean, you can get home alive, rather. And, and, and as far as whatever else needs to happen, go ahead and let the laws of the land prevail. And I truly believe, even though some folks done got away with some stuff before, after this last reaction we've just gotten pretty much from the whole world, I really don't think that the law is going to let too much stuff slip by any further. Right, right, right. Amen. So, so, so we have to learn how to exercise restraint. If I can say it like the old folks used to say, you got to learn how to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles. Now, let me go ahead and break this down for those of y'all Medea fans. We're not talking about the peace that is made of steel. We're not talking about the peace that you carry in your purse or in your glove compartment. We're not talking about that peace. We're not talking about Smith and Wesson. We're not talking about that peace. I'm talking about holding your peace. P E A. A C E, not P I E C E. Hold your peace, P E A C E, and let the Lord fight your battles. Lord, He ain't coming fast enough, so let me go ahead and help God out. God don't need your help, baby. God don't need our help. Let God go ahead and handle it. Let Him take care because He can deal with it a whole lot better than you can. So, yes, yeah, so we have to learn how to exercise restraint. Not only should we avoid retribution. Not only should we exercise restraint, but the last thing is this. We should consider reciprocity. Consider reciprocity. Here it is in the text, verse 31, verse 30 and 31. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. So we're not only called to be patient while under attack, but we are also called to be benevolent. Watch this. Even to the unthankful. Amen. Even to the unthankful. Now anybody who knows me well, you know if there's one thing I can't stand is giving something to an unthankful person. And, 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 and see, and not only, and see, this is what kills me. The people who are the less thankful are the ones who come to you for the most stuff. Yeah, I, I never shall forget, uh, I remember in the church that we were in before I started uh, pastoring Pastoring, um, we used to have, uh, you know, every year we had a, a, a Christmas drive. A Christmas drive. Y'all know what it is where people come to the church and you give them toys and you give them all these different things. You know, just to bless them. I mean, y'all, my, my our home church used to do it. I mean, they would they would uh, wrap those gifts. I mean, you, I mean, it was. I mean, they would wrap them nicely. No, no bubbles in the wrap. No, I mean, just smooth. I mean, it looked like it was wrapped at J C Penney's, man. I, it, it was nice. And we had this one lady who seemed like almost every year. Well, she got word. And see, this was before Facebook and Instagram and everything was like, you know, but she got word because flyers were going. Y'all remember flyers? The paper flyers? Flyers were going out that they were going to be giving away toys at the church. And I know she had about seven kids. 
small kids. And they came, they would come to the church every, and then one year, I mean, a few years she came, of course, it was while no one was there, and of course the people were in charge, blessed her with the gifts. And, and one year we had a Christmas Eve service, and, and the pastors decided, you know what, let's bless the families in front of everybody. Let's bless them publicly. Okay, so we even blessed the family publicly. I mean, everybody, you know, she coming down the aisle, and, you know, I don't even think the woman even cried. I don't even think she was even happy to get the stuff, and, you know, and the church, you know, crying and clapping. Oh, praise God. We blessed the family this year. Oh, praise God. And then not, a whole year didn't go by, by, I think around March. Here she come, want some more stuff. Yeah. But didn't even thank us for the stuff they got before. Right. Now, this is what got me because I remember when, you know, like when most of us graduated high school and college, my mom was real big on making me sit down and write thank you cards for everybody who got me a gift. That was the thing. You had to write a thank you. And see, we couldn't type them up back there. You had to handwrite that stuff. I had to write thank you cards for everybody who brought a gift. Because her main thing is people don't have to do anything for you. That's the thing that I've been taught for many years. We tell our children the same thing. People don't have to do anything for you. So I'm sorry if I get a little disturbed when I do stuff for people and they don't even have a comp the common decency to thank me for what I've already done. But let me talk about something here because, and I'm almost done, y'all. Because Watch this. Giving of yourself with no strings attached is a good way to counteract negativity with your enemies. Amen. Giving of yourself, watch this, with no strings attached. Y'all know what I mean by no strings attached, right? No strings attached mean that, you know, I'm not giving something to you, Stefan, because I want you to give me something back. And many times we, my God, help me the Holy Ghost, many times we do a lot of giving with strings attached. So what I'm going to do is, let me, come here, Stefan, come here, come here. All right. Watch this, y'all. All right, we're going to get behind this camera. All right. Now, here it is. I want you to hold the other thing to this towel. Don't worry, I didn't sweat too hard on it. All right, now, if I'm going to give Stefan this towel, the main thing I got to do is step back and let him take the towel. Okay? This is what many of us do. We give the towel, or we give, we give the gift, and we still hold. Oh, now, go, go sit down, Stefan. Go try to sit down. Follow me, Donald. Follow me with the camera. All right. So, here it is. So, every time Stefan move, I move. Yeah, huh? Yeah, uh -huh. I get, you know I gave you that, right? Yeah. You know, you know, yeah, you know I gave you that. That was my lay. I ain't had no money, man. I, I took money out of my per, out of my personal savings account. My wife don't even know I gave you that. And yeah, yeah, I just, you know, so yeah, I, I gave, uh huh, yeah. I just want you to remember mm -hmm. what you got it from. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Po I post on faith, taking self. Yeah, you bless. I mean, yeah, woo, blessing the people in the neighborhood. You know, taking selfies. Thank you, Brother Stefan. See, that's what you call strings attached giving. But here, Jesus wants us to know that when we give of ourselves with no strings attached, that's a good way to counteract negativity with our enemies. See, so when you give like that to your enemies, they're looking like, man, I don't even, I mean, I mean, as bad as I've done him. As bad as I talked about her, when I went off on that Facebook rant and tagged her and talked about her like a dirty dog and cussed her from Genesis to Revelation, but yet she's still being nice to me. She's still sending my kids. She's still giving my kids uh, sending cash app for their graduation, for their birthday. They're still doing this for me. Amen. So maybe I need to change the way. I think maybe I need to change the way I'm responding now unless this person is just uh, uh, full of hell and just don't care most people that'll make them change their tune about you now I'm not saying buy somebody's love I'm not saying that I'm not saying that you got to go out and buy someone's friendship I'm not saying that but what I'm saying is that we can use what Jesus is telling us as a tool to help our enemies see things differently and not only see things differently but see See us differently. Amen. Prime example, prime example. I'm just going to put you like this. If you want people to love you, if you want people to be gracious to you, you got to learn how to show them love and show them grace, even if they, if they love you or not. Right. Let me say it again. If you want people to love you, love them whether they love you or not. Amen. They say three times a charm. I'm going to say it one more time. If you want people to love you, love them whether they love you or not. 
That, that's, that's heavy, ain't it? Yeah. That's it? I know y'all say, oh, pastor, why you do, oh, why are you doing us like that? I'm just telling you what the word of God says. Yeah. Because that is the expectation. Because, see, it's, again, it's so easy. And I'm closing with this. Because it's so easy for us to, to get into that mindset that, you know what? I don't think I can do this because they just hurt me too bad. I don't think I, they talked about me too bad. I, you know, I've heard people tell me all the time, I can never love you. I will never forgive you. I will never. I'm, I'm going to treat you with a long handled spoon. Now, let me say something about that long handled spoon. Because every now and then, it's all right to keep the spoon handled long. Yeah, yeah. All right? Yeah, yeah. Now, that's not scripture. That's just David's talk. So don't y'all go try to research that and try to call me out on it. I'm just saying. Every now and then, it's good to keep that long handled spoon because, you know, the Bible says you need to know them by their fruit. Yeah. So we got to keep that in mind as well but 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 ultimately the love for that person still has to remain now and the last thing in my conclusion Jesus clearly tells us that we as his disciples are not to allow people of lesser principles to set our agenda we should not wait to see what the other person's going to do before we decide what it is what we're going to do and neither should we be trapped in a vicious cycle that someone else started no let me tell you what I mean by that. That means, that, okay, you tripping with me, I'm going to trip with you. Like my wife, her famous words is, oh, we can play this game. We, we, you want to you wanna go there? When, when we get into it, that's the main thing. When I, when I, come, when I come stupid sometimes, Nisha, she'll say, okay, okay, you want to play? Okay, we can play that game. All right, I, got, I got you. I got you. But, but listen, listen, that's, but that's, because, that's not because of her. That's because of my stupid acts. But let's keep on going here. I said stupid acts. A-C-T-S. Acts. All right, I didn't say something else, so y'all stay with me. No, he didn't. <laughs> uh, Y'all get that on the way to 288. All right, let me, let me hear Glory and Claire's close this thing out because watch this. We are to take the advantage of the initiative by loving, doing good, blessing, and praying for people even when they did not or will not do the same for us. And these behaviors might seem weak in the wake of hatred and violence that we're experiencing right now, but Jesus will change them. And he demonstrated for us, watch this, at the cross, how powerful that these behaviors can be. On the cross, he did not curse his enemies, but he prayed for them, he prayed for their forgiveness. As he hung on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. He could have said, Father, let all of them die. Father, get them. Because I know when you get them, they going to get God. He didn't say, he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Amen. Now, 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 now. Francis of Assisi, Martin Luther King Jr., and many other disciples have proven the power of love through the centuries. Uh -huh. And if you ever want to, uh, I had a friend that asked this question uh, last week. He said, does love really win? And my answer to that is yes, love wins. And with love, we can and we will overcome the world. But we just got to do it. We got to put it into practice. We see it, uh, you know, as Deacon Funches say all the time, it's in the book. It's in the book. We see it, but we've got to abide by it. We've got to obey the principles that are in the word of God. And when we do that and we allow love to actually win and we don't allow retaliation to the, 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 the desire to want to retaliate to get into our hearts, then we can win over our brother. We can win over our sister. We can win over those who've been dirty and dogging us for many, many years. And if you believe that, you ought to say amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen.